Hello, all. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you, depending on which part of the world you've joined in. I welcome you all to this uh, podcast on the as a part of the Bond Digital series that Altism uh, conducts. Uh, today's podcast is about reimagining manufacturing. Uh, Altism is an industrial IoT platform company that uh, is among the leading platform providers for the entire smart factory and connected asset space in uh, you know the industrial world and uh, we have our core products and platform uh, collecting data and assets connecting assets in 31 countries around the world and working with some of the leading industrial conglomerates out there in terms of accelerating their uh, digital strategies uh, it's a great pleasure for me to start off this particular podcast with uh, SRF uh, who is among uh, the leading manufacturers of uh, fluorochemicals, specialty chemicals, you know, technical textiles, and uh, you know, various other diverse industrial products, and have multi multiple manufacturing plants spread across uh, India, Thailand, and South Africa. It's a hundred-year-old business group with a very strong track record in uh, uh, you know, building uh, to quality values, and uh, you know, uh, among the their storied uh, highlights are, you know, having won the Demon Prize a couple of times, and you know they've been associated with uh, the social sector in terms of education and many other activities, uh, you know, for uh, uh, for for almost a century now, right? So, uh, so it's a pleasure and a privilege to invite Mr. Bimal Puri onto this particular podcast. Bimal is. Uh, the head of IT and automation for the tech te technical textile business at SRF, and uh, you know is a very active uh, CIO with uh, representation and participation in many uh, industry forums, uh, both here in India as well as around the world. So welcome, Bimal, onto the podcast. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you for the welcome. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so, so today we're going to cover a lot of you know, some of uh, uh, topics that you know really look at uh, you know how we are going to reimagine manufacturing in the backdrop of you know the COVID canvas and you know uh, some of them some of the uh, uh, commentators in the world are talking of the great acceleration as you know this being a period where you know suddenly uh, decades of work happens in a matter of uh, a year or a couple of years right so uh, so in the backdrop of that right and as we look at uh, you know, while we are actively fighting uh, what is, uh, you know, an invisible enemy, uh, you know, uh, how do you, Bimal, look at this new normal, as they call it, in manufacturing? And, you know, uh, how, you know, how is the market shaping up the overall scenario at this point of time? Yeah, uh, Vinay, a uh, good question as well as the new normal is concerned. So I just want to mention before the new normal comes, we have to be normal. So, <laughs> So today the situation is not normal. So not so easy to predict uh, uh, that when this new normal will come, but yes, there will be some changes in the ecosystem, which uh, we have already started looking at, like in terms of uh, online buying or be it, uh, you can say a, a lot of visual analytics is playing a key role uh, in terms of social distancing and uh, Yes, definitely there is going to be a new normal uh, after this uh, current situation get normalized. And a lot of technology and uh, automation projects organization will take forward. So the pure reason for doing that will be more from the cost mindset. Because people have understood and realized that using a technology, it is easier to manage cost. That's my okay. uh, point as far as the new normal is concerned. So that is going to be the driver for that. So uh, can, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, right? Uh, obviously, you know, the market, uh, nobody probably knows when or uh, can calibrate exactly when a lot of the demand will come back, right? So is it in the light of that that you're talking of cost, uh, you know, probably can you, uh, you know, share an example about how this will play out uh, in uh, you know the market yeah so uh, like as you see that uh, the current situation and the new normal is expected 
that visual analytics, as I mentioned, is one of the examples. Okay, now, for example, you have a plan to set up. Okay, and you have a barrier to get people from overseas to get it installed. Okay, so how you will do? Are you going to wait for a long? Or you will find another way. So recently, like I just give you example, we had a line which just got started in our uh, packaging film business uh, where uh, we were at the last stage and suddenly this lockdown has happened. So people could not travel. So with the help of technology and supporting the project online, we could start that line during this time, during this tough time, which is a remarkable achievement of our uh, packaging film business also. Uh, the team who has worked and also the uh, organizations which are supporting that installation, which I say is a real example uh, of using a technology uh, in a difficult time and nobody knows it becomes a new normal going forward. So that's a, that's a little deeper point. I just want to give you the example. And okay, perfect. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, with respect to uh, the running plants also, if you see now, the movement of the people is restricted and it is going to be there for some time and people have already tasted a remote support architecture. So where uh, the remote support architecture uh, earlier was not so much welcomed in certain areas of manufacturing, but I personally feel is that that is going to be another area on which people are going to look at when the new normal will come. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, right? And, and something that we are also seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, as being a big factor uh, around, uh, you know, working with somebody or not working with somebody is the ability to deal with low touch deployment, right? In a sense, uh, you know, get things up and running with minimal feet on the ground, uh, right? Uh, is that something that you see is, you know, uh, do you think that is firmly part of the new normal in many ways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is going okay. to be a new norm. Okay. So, so then, you know, as we kind of, sorry, go ahead. Another aspect uh, which I see is uh, normally organizations are having a mindset to do automation later after putting a new plan. So the automation, the physical automation like robots and other automatic system uh, will be considered during the initial inception of the plant itself mm. as a part of the design that I see a big, can be a big change, game changer. True, very true, uh, very true. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of this happening in the market out there. Every company is kind of looking at, uh, you know, what their uh, adaptation is going to be towards this new normal. So how is, uh, you know, uh, SRF looking at it? How are you looking at it? Uh, you know, uh, if you could share some pointers in terms of how this is going to change the way you guys are going to, uh, you know, uh, 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 change your offerings, processes. How are you going? How are you looking at it? Yes, definitely. Uh, from a SRF standpoint of view, like uh, you have been resuscitated with us, you know that uh, the organization, as an organization, we are pro and very active in using technologies. And uh, most of the cases I've seen that we don't get any resistance from the management to invest in these technologies. And rather they are very uh, happy to invest in these technologies because these technologies help us a lot when it comes to managing the cost, when it comes to managing a physical uh, disaster kind of a scenarios which is currently going on. So like our entire, entire IT systems and setups, if we see are running uh, as uh, from past or 40 days, uh, everybody is on remote. Everybody is connecting to each other. A few of the plants are running. So they've been having a few uh, meetings, not few meetings, every day there is a meeting between the peer groups or the leadership teams. So, I mean, the technology, when we invested at that point in time is giving us a benefit today. Okay, so as an organization, we will continue this journey and we will be further becoming more aggressive in terms of uh, investing on automations, okay, where we can uh, leverage uh, the benefit uh, 
uh, from the technology, not only as a cost driver, but, but also to improve the productivity. Okay. So like if you the IoT, uh, like IoT generally people just talk mainly about connecting and getting some data. But I see that there is a lot of scope in managing the variable cost also. Like how you read the data, process parameter, and control your consumptions of even the raw material at the processing. Mm. So it's not only just not only just anomaly detection and anomaly prevention. So uh, you know, so Bimal, you know, if you could kind of highlight this a little bit more deeper. So you know, when you are talking of things like IoT, right, and you are talking about right now uh, raw material consumption and kind of finding ways in which you can optimize it. Uh, you know, maybe can you share an example of you know what kind of advantage that has? Because I know you know led to a significant uh, you know impact on uh, how you look at things. So like I just give example when we normally talk about. Uh, process optimization, we normally talk about process conditions. But uh, when we often use IoT data, which like one of our dipping lines, we did it in the day. So we use that data for even planning. So which process condition, process parameter I'm running and what will be the optimized model which I should follow when I plan or do my scheduling on the shop floor. Hmm. So that I can actually reduce my cost at that point in time and also reduce my process. Okay. Just changing the process parameter. So how I can do it is if I get that data from the machine for a little longer period and do that analysis on the top. Okay. And so, uh, you know, in terms of tangible, uh, you know, immediate output, would that be along the lines of saying you can do multiple products, uh, you know, simultaneously as based on uh, and uh, the insights that you gain from doing this uh, monitoring and planning, advanced monitoring and planning, is that kind of how you look at it? Correct, correct. Okay. Okay, uh, great. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, this is uh, uh, something of immense value, right? Here we are talking of connecting, uh, uh, you know, uh, having things like IoT having an immediate tangible value to the way you do business and having an impact across multiple KPIs that you may have as an organization, right? So, uh, you know, in the way SRF is adapting to this, uh, you know, uh, your digital journey, I know, began a lot earlier, and we ourselves have been associated with you for several years now. So, uh, you know, how do you look at your digital story? It's what are the main objectives that you're working with, uh, you know, uh, and uh, maybe I can, uh, you know, just take a pause here and, uh, for the folks that are attending uh, this particular webinar, you can keep sending in your que queries in the Q&A section that is provided, and you know I will definitely start bubbling them up. So it's about another 10 minutes or so of uh, you know these set of questions, and then I'll start bubbling up some of the questions that are coming up. So with that, let me get back to uh, you know uh, Bimal on you know the importance of digital to SRF. If we could, could share some more tidbits of the origins of it, why it became so important, and then we'll kind of come to maybe I'll, you know, I, I know you have a quick visual to kind of capture some of the, uh, you know, major initiatives that you guys are working on. So, uh, Bimal, if we could start with origins of digital and why it became so important to SRF, and then, you know, we could dive into what are your priorities today. Okay. Uh... Like if you see uh, today, if I see there are two areas broadly we are working on it. One is on the information that is the data side, which helps us in running our process more efficiently uh, so that we should have a low reworks, low wastages, and also we also manage our consumption well. So that is one part of the uh, digital journey we have. And another thing we have recently started is basically making use of automation on the shop floor. Okay, like, uh, I mean, though the COVID situation has come right now, so we have recently installed and uh, we have a lot of trolley movement on the shop floor for yarn. Okay, so from a yarn spinning section, it goes to the textile section. So how, how I can uh, make it touchless or how can I optimize that process? So we have recently gone in with an automated guided vehicle, okay? and which is first of its kind, it works on various maps. I can uh, configure various maps uh, onto that vehicle and I can use 
it for a metal moment. Okay, and on the top of it, I can also put a lot of sensors around it to check my conditions also. So, which we have recently started using it. And if you see today's situation where I talk about less object touching scenario. So that vehicle don't need any manpower to pull anything or drive anything. So you just hook it to that vehicle and the route is mapped onto that vehicle and that vehicle moves from one A location to B location on its own. So what I'm doing is that you don't need so many people to just move. There's a lot of movement of material which happens. So that's a journey which we have started uh, recently uh, towards automation. So like I'm now taking care of that activity also. So I foresee a very strong use cases now in industries to go for these technologies. Okay, as you said that we have been doing, we did all kind of automation, we need a ERP or we need a, uh, in terms of data management and other things. But those are now already exist. Mm -hmm. So we are not talking. So We'll be on IoT projects where we are uh, working on not only the preventions, also the predictive analytics part of it. So we have generated a couple of models which will help us in managing our consumptions as I said for a raw material and other uh, utilities. Sure. Uh Okay, so so you know, and uh, you know, we've tried to capture some of that story. And one of the remarkable things for uh, the listeners on this particular webinar is, you know, SRF has been one of those companies that at least we've had the privilege of working with. That is a very holistic picture. You know, there is an advanced set of things that uh, are you know really unique. And you know, I know that uh, uh, SRF has also won awards, uh, a CIO award around some of the predictive quality work that uh, you guys have done around this. But even, you know, right from the basic use cases to the most complex, you know, there's all of that in parallel. And uh, one of the things that has always stood out to me in terms of how, uh, you know, you look at the picture as a whole picture of integration, right? Combining all of this to have, uh, you know, data sets correlating, you know, production data, uh, you know, correlation with co uh, uh, the quality data so that you can then build up the predictive uh, algorithms involved, right? So you guys were way ahead of the curve in terms of uh, implementing all of that, right? So, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's always been, uh, you know, a big, big learning for us as well as we have, we have worked with uh, you around some of those things. So, um, uh, uh, you know, as you look ahead, right, and you spoke about, uh, uh, you know, automated guided vehicles right now, you spoke about, uh, you know, uh, different uh, predictive analytics, of course, but how do you look at AI, VR, you know, in, VR in particular, is there anything else in VR that is of interest to you? What is the next future? Uh, thing that uh, you know you would want to look at why with automated vehicles of course being something that you guys are already looking at actively yeah uh, so if you see i have mentioned in the initial uh, points one subject is of a remote support okay where your vr is going to play a role in critical field and where uh, like for example could I even getting a specialized because you have a machines which are very specialized machines and you don't get an expert uh, every time on the shop floor to help you out. So what is the way forward to solve that problem? Um, if you call them, the costs are going to be very high, travel cost, time. So how to become productive by doing a automation in this area? So automation, it's not the automation per se, but yes, how to use technology to reduce our cost of maintenance and also have a high availability of the key resources at any point in the day. So these are the two challenges or the two problem points that I personally feel on which uh, we are doing some uh, research and analysis also. And we have created certain use cases around that also. That how we can do a remote support using these technologies of VR. And I, uh, again, as we talked about the new normal, I think the digital, we were only talking about data earlier. Now the video is going to be a very critical aspect. Mm. So where technologies like uh, 
these VR devices and you have various other uh, apps which are coming you straight away loaded onto the mobile and they, they help you out in doing the remote management of the machines and correcting it. So at least in the IFC, in overseas, we have uh, these technologies are in use in a lot of use cases. But in India also, I personally feel is going to be the new way of using another technology. So that that's a perfect segue, you know, kind of to the uh, to a couple of questions right there, you know. So one I'm bubbling up from the audience as well, and uh, something that I also wanted to talk to, you know, how do you see the adoption picture across Asia, across uh, you know, uh, maybe Africa as you have plans there as well, right? Uh, from a global standpoint, you know, starting off with, of course, Asia, um, you know, how do you see the adoption of uh, these advanced, uh, you know, kind of things uh, in the manufacturing world right now? Okay. Uh, that's a good question. And uh, uh, I've been getting these questions even in various CIO forums also. People ask about adoption. So when you say adoption, the first uh, comes from the top. I mean, how 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 management looks into it. So if you really create a, a case where you have a ROI of the project or a offering or a technology which you are going to propose, definitely the first level of adoption happens there. Okay. So this is this is also a part of adoption. So like in SRF, when we do, we have a ROI. We don't face any issue getting that approved uh, from the management. So, which is a very positive sign or we don't face problems or challenges in that level of uh, acknowledgement. Second thing is when you get a technology, you have to train people on the shop floor to use their technology. And I've seen that now the new generation which has come or the new people who are coming on the shop floors, they are already tech savvy. They're already tech savvy and they actually feel more comfortable on the shop floor when they work with technology. You understand? Yep, so absolutely. Like, and why they like it? Because idea is again, when you have to control certain things on the shop floor, it is very difficult to control complex uh, or say voluminous data by acting manually. So these technology, be it RFID, barcode, or IoT, these technologies actually help and adoption is already there. So like if you see when we talk about textile, we have all these technologies in place. There will be initial questions. We don't, I don't call it as a, uh, a resistance because there are normal questions which people have to uh, hear it out and answer to the users. And I'm sure adoption will never be a problem. So you touched on two critical points there, uh, Vimal. You spoke about, um, you know, the uh, um, uh, you you spoke about the whole uh, desire within SRF to, you know, also fast track some of these things if the ROI is there, right? And uh, uh, you know, one of the questions was also an ROI, and do you think the desire is there, right? So I think, uh, and this is something that I know talking of you, uh, talking to you in the past as well. You firmly believe that, you know. Uh, if the ROI is there, it's something that should be done, right? And this is something that, uh, and ROI is definitely there, right? We have been running this for a few years now. So uh, can you just address that ROI thing a little bit uh, uh, in more detail? Yeah, basically if you, um, uh, like I'll just, uh, again, this is a normal question which comes for, from anybody who actually wanted to adopt a new technology. How to justify that as a return? So like, uh, as I told you that when you actually do a process analysis, you will find that there are a lot of anomalies which are difficult to handle manually or by just looking at the process parameters. So though we have all uh, people will have all SCADA system, but you will not find people sitting on the SCADA system or DC system to look at the anomalies, correct? So normally you see on the shop floor, those are being fed set values are fed and people are just moving around and nobody is sitting 100% on that. And there was small alarming system is there, but there is a lot of deep data which is there in the process. There are a lot of other sensors which are uh, there, which can throw a lot of insights of the process. And by using IoT and integrating it, 
I have seen that you can easily fine tune your process and which can even like if you are doing a management of a time, that is one side, you can manage temperatures and other kind of a process parameter, which can give you a saving in terms of reducing your LPG consumption, for example. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and you can always have, say, if you do a process parameter correlation with quality, so you can do fine tuning on the process parameters, which can reduce in the rework or can reduce in your substandard generation. So those, those uh, uh, data points becomes your saving when you actually calculate that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, couldn't have uh, said it better in that respect. And, uh, you know, I'll acknowledge Klaus as in back, you know, for having, uh, you know, <laughs> echoed our, your sentiment there in terms of, uh, you know, it, it's being a big factor for, uh, you know, the long-term ROI uh, of the company. It's not just cost, it's so much in so many more things. So Claus, thank you for that. Um, going back to some of the questions that have come up, right? So one of the questions that have come up is around, okay, how do you prioritize, right? I'm just leading off from the ROI into, you know, what do you take when the sequencing of some of these things, right? So when you look at the, you know, the different projects that you have, right? How do you prioritize, you know, what is it? Uh, uh, do you use a framework or you know, anything that uh, you could shed light on around that? Okay, uh, now the prioritization is again, the first uh, is that you need to find what problem you are trying to solve. You have to find out the trade areas. Okay, or uh, then once you identify that, so you have to find which technology will help us to solve that problem. Okay, and then assume that you have a 10 uh, problems to be solved and you have to prioritize among them, then obviously, which is, is going to give me a more benefit in terms of rupees lakh, I will prioritize that all the time. So that, that's the high priority, definitely. So uh, again, again, it depends what problem you're going to solve. So this is where you prioritize. But yes, you have to, being a TQM company, you have to first list down your issues. And then you have to prioritize those issues based on a methodology. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that and, you know, uh, uh, shedding light on that. So, um, you know, as we develop uh, on, you know, okay, there is, it is a priority. Then we went into essentially looking at, uh, is there ROI? Then we looked at, okay, uh, you know, how do you kind of sequence and prioritize, right? So as we look at uh, different aspects of accelerating this, right, the people aspect, the cultural aspect is a very critical one. And, you know, again, uh, bubbled up by one of the attendees. So how do you, uh, you know, how did you address that in SRS? Okay. So, uh, I mean, as far as the people engagement is concerned, uh, we do take key stakeholders on board right from the day one. Uh, I mean, even at the problem identification stage, we do have our discussions around that this is the problem we are going to solve. And based on that, uh, we also uh, talk about how to take that technology on the shop floor. So we do one kind of FMEA uh, to see what problems we can face. Okay. So uh, to do that, the first and very important thing is that you should have a complete scenarios listed before even finding out a technology. Because sometimes what happens, people just go by uh, buying a technology by a fascination and miss out on the scenarios. So when they buy the technology and their middle of implementation, they realize, oh, this technology or this way or the approach is not going to handle my, these five scenarios out of say 15 scenarios. So if your solution is you have to look more from a solution perspective. So if your solution is not solving some of the problems or rather is not addressing or creating a certain more disruption within the smooth process, definitely you will find the resistance from the shuffle. So it's not that people actually don't want to do it. So when they feel uncomfortable using a particular technology or a solution, they will resist. So Another fear, like normally people ask me a question, like if you do automation, some people will lose a job. 
okay believe me in an srf i have not seen in so many implementation that anybody because of implementing or automation has lost a lost a job so technically what happens that and on a value side also srf strongly believes we don't just move out people like that we always treat them as our asset so employees have got a confidence so that culture also has to be built it, it's actually support me that culture that value actually support me a lot when i implement any technology in the shop perfect great that's a great point and you know i'll i'll kind of use that to lead the discussion uh, you know into uh tying a couple of questions that are out there right so one is you know greenfield versus brownfield this also comes up very often right uh, there is this um, you know myth in some ways that uh, you know only greenfield is where you can do these types of where so whereas the maximum roi at least my my view is always in the brownfield side of the equation so so uh, you know how, what is your take on that uh, bimal yeah as you correctly mentioned that roi is will be much better compared to the greenfield is in the brownfield because you will be working on the technologies which are old okay and they there the processes will be little inconsistent compared to the new technologies um, when i say technology means on the machinery side on the shop floor and uh, they will be less sophisticated so in the brown field you will get much better benefit in terms of roi if you implement process well or you implement the technology well and uh, another key point which i uh, always uh, whenever i get a chance to interact with uh, some of the people they ask me this question is that uh, people don't allow us to connect to their dc system okay Correct. so there is, has to be a specific architecture on the security also which people must consider when they deploy iot technology and beside this another important thing is that you should have a partner with you who can also help you out in putting it additional sensors if required so you they should have a good ecosystem around them okay you will find a lot of people who can just pull the data and give you but if you ask them that we need little more data and uh, we need to add more sensors so then they are lost that how to bring that ecosystem back so uh, it is a very very critical role which uh, a business partner or a, a service provider has to play that he should have a ecosystem around him where even in the older machines he can add more sensors and make it more communicable correct and you know and that ties into the other question that uh, you know is also the the advantage as you have in brownfield in a sense is that the baseline benchmarking for a lot of the process right and the kpis is already there right and you are looking at improving that right so in a sense uh, you know there is something that you have, we have concrete that you have to work with in a greenfield you first set the baseline and uh, you know uh, so in that sense right there is a lot of advantage to existing baselines to be able to quickly demonstrate roi uh, you know uh, in a brownfield kind of uh, situation right right correct 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 right um and so you know so really looking at this now um, you know from the angle of uh, uh, you know obviously there are many use cases that matter right for use quality being one and all of that uh, you know since this has come up from some of the questions in particular uh, you, you i know from you know that Uh, typically when an organization they looks at uh, industriality they're looking at productivity quality uh, you know the maintenance side of the equation uh, the whole traceability visibility of uh, everything that's happening and finally the whole energy which is a very very important part tying all of these things together right so so what is your thoughts around energy and how you know how how that plays uh, monitoring that how that plays a critical role in yielding the roi i think uh, the point what you are trying to make uh, is uh, is how to energize people right <laughs> it is the easiest way so, to energize people <laughs> so so i i personally feel is that uh, some people are self starters self motivator so you need not to spend too much energy on that <laughs> you will actually find uh, 
and what i've seen is the people who uh, you you say that they are resisting or they don't have energy to drive these things uh, actually sometimes you have to find a real reason out of that that why why they are so you have to do a little deeper why why analysis and uh, in the project you don't have to only apply your technical and management skills and you have to also apply your psychological skills how how you how you interact how you make people convince so this is also a very very critical thing so it's it's not that there is one way you can apply this formula and generate energy to the people so for generating energy you have to be very person specific you cannot be a generic on that that's my request because sometimes what people do is that okay if a person can understand by becoming a little hard so i will put everybody use the same technique so you have to use a different uh, methods to engage people to generate energy sometime i'll tell you like even for example a person is having some issue at home okay so he you will find low energies when he come to the office so at that point in time, you have to actually address those things you cannot simply yeah. say why he is not doing why the energy levels are low and you have to do yeah. some energy booster uh, program for the people it's it, it doesn't work like that so uh, yeah absolutely i mean motivations energy this is important but even as a use case uh, you know if you were to look at cutting utility bills and things like that right obviously that's a given right it's a very very uh, you know production uh, uh, energy measured as a function of production per unit all of that uh, it, it gets really accelerated because once you have a connected smart factory kind of a setup right uh, and srf has done a lot of work in that area if i'm correct and uh, i think uh, the point what you have just made in terms of energy conservation is a very very critical and a key point the way uh, the it is becoming a cost uh, costly component of any cost of conversions so mm -hmm. i think one is that like you take an example of chillers okay where you mm -hmm. you if it is running 24 by 7 definitely they will consume power why don't you have a system around which tell you at what point in time you have to switch off the chillers where you can save the energy okay so the only control as i told you many times is that only thing which is in hand of a person is to control the consumption or to manage the consumption the rates are definitely not in hand of the organizations so like government Perfect. they they just have their own way of increasing rates okay so the only thing which is hand in terms of a people who are working on the shop floor is to manage their consumption control so if you have a connected factory if you have data available if you have analysis available if you have a correlation available it becomes easier and on a real time basis you can take a action Perfect. um you know so on that note right um, you know as we look at okay we have looked at srf journey srf use cases your perspectives on things uh, related to culture change and culture management let's move on to uh, some of the other aspects that have you know equally important right the whole vendor ecosystem and uh, you know uh, partners that you need to be able to execute some of these there are a couple of questions with around how you do that and you know what are the best ways to um you know figure this out right uh, what are the attributes that you're looking for what kinds of um, uh, partnerships do you build so if you could just you know um, touch upon some of those aspects okay uh, like as i mentioned in my previous uh, in terms of uh, ecosystem uh, which is required to implement any technology today especially with when it comes to iot Uh, is that we have a lot of people who can fetch data and throw on a edge okay but mm -hmm. is that data is sufficient who will decide that okay. definitely there will be domain people who will do that they will tell that these are the parameters we monitor then i have a set of machine for example which is a older machine okay i want to address one problem in managing a temperature which is critical 
to uh, which has got an impact on my product quality okay but i may be having a limited senses in the zones i would like to add more senses so the service provider whether that service provider who is you can call it as a iot solution provider having that particular strength if not does he have a required ecosystem who can support this process okay so this is a very very important criteria when you select a particular service provider in any iot project otherwise what happens that you will have people who will have a half knowledge and they will come you will struggle and then you will find out oh, we have to add 10 more senses but the person is in our ecosystem to add those 10 senses whatever 70 work you have done is not going to yield the result so it is very very critical that you should select a partner which has got that ecosystem with them correct and you know the whole digital nature of it and there's a you know there's a point around cloud accelerating some of uh, this journey as well right so in a sense even the ecosystem partner that you choose has to be ready for that uh, new normal is really a new world right the great acceleration as we started off so isn't that also a core important skill yeah that is also important skill that you should know how to manage these uh, systems uh, the technical know how of managing the technology uh, handling part of it and another thing i uh, always say is that the technology is already there digital transformation has already happened okay all these things are there skill sets are there only thing is that when you want to get into that world that is critical Correct. so Correct. here a important role is the people who are leading these initiatives how they uh, manage uh, to list down the needs list down the scenarios list down the benefits from the business side engage the domain guy the uh, service provider has to play a critical role to map those requirements those scenarios and see which te- whether the technology is available or not or not and okay. if it is available we should have a skill set to manage that technology from a long term perspective perfect so uh, you know uh, that brings up also a very interesting so when you talk of ecosystem there's the vendors there's also how you yourself see yourself as a digital citizen in the context of uh, the ecosystem right so there are your customers and there are your suppliers right and so uh, would it be pretty much a view that you know everybody who is already on that digital path will be like a preferred supplier is it a mandate that you will give to your suppliers and you know obviously i know that srf prides on its digital journey so uh, I, you know to your customers that's something that uh, you would provide as a differentiator so uh how, what are your your take around how this will evolve like if you see uh, like yes definitely one is that uh, when any customer buys some product from you it should be of a uh, required quality and uh, and the cost also not only the quality so today the cost is also important factor and another thing is as you mentioned that yes everybody when they first see i said it's quality correct then the cost okay so when we say quality when uh, all good organizations i have seen nowadays have a very good and strong robust vendor evaluation system and in that system actually the people just see not only the product details also the processes are being followed in the organization. and also to the extent many a times today the customer is also keeping when they rate a vendor they also keep in how good you are in problem solving you understand so for example yeah, if somebody, uh, if if i have sent a product and suddenly in between in some of the lots i face a problem or the end product where it is getting consumed has got some issues are you helping out customers in solving the, those problems or not and to solve and, a problem you need a technology yeah so to be able to audit this and to you know ensure that uh, the 
compliance is maintained from the supplier side and all of that right uh, would it be fair to say that when you look at your vendor evaluation you definitely you know factor in uh, hey am i getting a digital footprint of you know uh, the quality logs or you know is is there some kind of uh, uh, additional uh, data feed that i'm getting from my supplier that assures me that the process has been followed and things like that i'm assuming those are part of it right that becomes uh, a added advantage if you see that okay. sometimes i'm a differentiator also mm -hmm. yeah so i i know for a fact that for example some of our customers who are you know suppliers to folks like you right they take pride on the fact that hey we already have this system up and you know part of the factory tour is also actually showing hey we have all of this documented digitally and you know you will have access to it if you need uh, to verify stuff and things like that right so so yeah absolutely i see that as a big big part of how uh, things evolve so uh, you know kind of tying back to uh, you know this whole revival new normal uh, kind of a time uh, a thread and you know i think we have done justice to a lot of the questions that have come in here uh, you know very important obviously security in the context of all of this right uh, um, you know uh, i i love to talk of security as a best practice and it has it is not something that is add on it has to be way the way the products are built the way they get evaluated when you are looking at uh, you know vendor ecosystems and all that right so uh, uh, you know i'm sure you have some thoughts around uh, security and how you look at uh, you know so some of the concerns as well right uh, in terms of your opening up connected factory uh, does that doesn't exactly mean that you know somebody from the outside world has access to your machine but you know there is a lot of uh, uh, you know um, fear and uncertainty around these types of things so how do have you dealt with that and what are your thoughts around that yes uh, this point is very valid and this normally comes at the initial stage of project it's like when you when you mm. uh, are discussing on that so what i've seen is that there is a lot of stress which is coming in that what is the right kind of ot security so uh, it's not coming from the it security it is coming more from the ot security so ot security uh, i still Correct. feel people Uh, you need to convince people on the shop floor. You have to convince people uh, around uh, your uh, organization where yes, this becomes a concern because end of the day, your core processes should not be disturbed. Correct. Okay. The strongly feel is that uh, uh, like companies like uh, AltiZone who are into these implementation must come up with a clear. Uh, explanation or a document or a white paper uh, when they talk to the people in the industry that yes these are the offerings or these are the good but good i don't say it's a best practice these are the good practices which normally to be taken care before doing any project in terms of ot security correct so that whole check of ot security should be the first step when you start evaluating your technology Correct. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, and you know, just to kind of augment what you just said, right? Uh, as you rightly pointed out, pretty much we uh, and Altizen definitely does it when we walk in. Um, one of the first things that we do is an IT OT assessment, right? Which does a comprehensive check of you know the data availability and also uh, the network security availability, all of that, right? A big part of uh, you know our job is actually the you know ensuring that that OT infrastructure is set up the right way, right? And it takes a lot of cycles and Uh, very often gets misunderstood, uh, you know. Uh, till you know, we have walked the customer through the sensitivity of it, the reason for it, and how uh, you know it needs to be uh, monitored, right, um, uh, and maintained over time, right. So, uh, and yes, you know, having done these things now for seven odd years, and you know, we have had our systems up and running, uh, you know, for six and a half years on the public cloud and or private cloud kind of scenarios. it takes a lot of work and it's a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, you know practices that have evolved over all this time that has gotten us to where we are so it should be a key part of a key question as uh, one of the um, you know panel uh, one of the attendees has spoken on right so surrounding so off we let's go back to where we started and we touched upon energy and we touched about the role of the sea uh, you know management in terms of driving this right so uh, you know uh, to kind of summarize and uh, uh, you know get this back to this uh, you know what is the role that in a sense the ceo cio cxo 
if you will has to play in terms of driving this right and i i think we touched upon a good word energy in between and you know use that in both contexts uh, the utility wise and as well as the and uh, you know these are times which are challenging to uh, you know the best of us right so uh, how uh, you know do you think uh, the cxo is supposed to drive this uh, internal uh, you know uh, change if you see uh, i mean uh, you see the other side of this covid 19 okay like if you see what uh, cxo cio or ceo could not do covid has done it <laughs> so people are really using the technology to the maximum though to the limited extent of uh, uh, interacting uh, doing conferences on the web doing webinars i mean a lot of people are now feeling more comfortable doing webinar and they are uh, being able to attend more such uh, knowledge session compared to the past one where you have to be physically there to get some knowledge so yeah. yes so these this is uh, one thing which you see covid has put back uh, the technology implementation on the ground this is point number one and as far as your question is concerned that how a management should say so i'm telling you that i think the technology is already there digital transformation has already happened so it is a choice of organization and the people who are driving be it anybody i mean it's not the single person's responsibility or single role's responsibility everybody has to see when they want to get into that role correct because technology is going to be there and believe me the younger generation is coming into the system they are going to the organizations be it a manufacturing or a non manufacturing and right from their childhood they know only to work with technology correct so they will okay. be very comfortable working on the old systems and continuing in that also becomes another challenge Okay. how to manage okay. so thanks a lot uh, bimal we covered a lot of ground uh, you know a good set of 20 25 questions on uh, you know several aspects of digital uh, you know uh, in the in the reimagining manufacturing as you know as we were looking at discussing the topic of this podcast and i think you know thank you so much for doing uh, you know uh, great justice to the topic and all the questions that came in from the attendees thank you so much to all the attendees for uh, you know uh, your active participation and you know all the questions that you kept rolling in please feel free to reach out to us on uh, you know more forums and through uh, email and calls if you you know if you have more things to discuss uh, i am actively looking for speakers and uh, guests as well so any suggestions of whom you would want us to pull in on these podcasts also is something that uh, you know we would actively seek to from all of you Uh, do please respond to uh, you know the uh, podcast questions that uh, you know our host would have uh, put in front of you right now uh, you know to so that we get some immediate feedback in terms of how this session went uh, and you know always uh, waiting to hear back from you in terms of uh, uh, you know what we can do better so with that once again bimal thank you so much for joining us and uh, you know enlightening us on so many aspects of uh, you know Uh, something that is very exciting to you know i know both of us uh, in terms of this whole uh, new normal and how we are going to act, you know accelerate uh, progress in that new normal thank you so much vimal once again thank you so much vine thanks for the having this wonderful session and i thanks all the participants who have uh, been there with their questions and uh, i mean it's it's always a mutual learning so i have also learned a lot of things Uh, during the <laughs> you guys through the questions only great thank you so much all so i with that we're concluding the session and uh, you know look forward to having you all uh, on some more sessions like this thanks bye thank you